Ooh, cookies are ready, guys. Welcome back to another episode of English Cooking, where I teach you English through cooking. Now, in my last episode, I cooked these cookies for my future wife. I guess I didn't cook them. I baked them. It's kind of weird. Why do we use the verb bake when they're cookies? Wouldn't it make more sense to use the word cook for cookies? <laughs> this is weird. Sometimes I think of weird things. Do you ever think of weird things? Smash like if you ever think of weird things. Anyway, I'll put the link to that video in case you didn't see part one of this. I'll put the link somewhere up here at the end of this video so you can see all these cool cookies with these nice messages. Right? There are three messages on these cookies. The one is uh, stop talking. Another one is, I hope you choke. And another one is, please go die. So that was part one. Uh, thanks for sticking with me for part two here. Now in this video, we're going to ice the cookies, right? We're going to ice them. Do you know what that means? That means to put icing on the cookies. Right now the word ice is, um, it's usually a noun, right? When we talk about ice, like here in Canada, it's winter. It's the dead of winter right now. The dead of winter means the middle of winter. Really cold this next week, guys. I'll put up a picture of the forecast here. It's going to be like minus 30 for like a whole week, maybe more, maybe, maybe all month, all next year. It's cold here in Canada. But anyway, outside there's snow and ice. Okay, so like a chunk of ice, right? It's a noun. But the word ice can also be a verb. To ice something means to put icing on the cookies. Okay, so remember that in this, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at some words that can be both nouns and verbs. And you know, the kind of the confusing thing for English learners, a lot of English learners maybe know one of the meanings of the word, but they don't know they don't know the other meaning, so they get kind of confused, All right? So, for example, right now I'm just looking at a bag on my floor. I don't know why I have a bag on my floor. Okay, so a word like that, bag, could be a noun or a verb, right? You got a bag, right? You know, a bag of flour, yeah, right? Or a, a sack. No, this wouldn't be called a sack. A sack is a big, a sack is like a big... Thing. If this were like huge, then you could use the word sack, but uh, this is, I guess you could call it a bag of flour, right? So a bag, it's a noun, but if you, uh, if you bag something, which is a verb, that means to put something in a bag. Okay, so if you're shopping, if you're out grocery shopping, you know, sometimes there are those um, people at the checkout, they're called bag boys, I think, bag boys, bag girls. No, we don't say bag girls. It's always bag boys. <laughs> It'd probably be bad to say bag girls because bag has a different meaning. A bag is like a, is a slang word, kind of a disrespectful word to talk about an elderly woman, <laughs> right? A bag. So, I don't know. I don't think we have bag girls, but the bag boys are like the people kind of, you know, when your, your groceries come down, not the cashier, right? The cashier, you know, um, What's the word? R rings? Rings all your groceries through the till? Is that the word I'm looking through for? Sometimes even native English speakers don't know. You know, where they scan it, right? Beep, beep, right? The person over there is the bag boy, right? Putting all your groceries in the bag. He's bagging them, right? So he might say, um, would you like me to bag your groceries? Would you like, would you like me to bag? And you might be a bit confused. You might think, bag. I mean, you might understand the meaning. You might get what he's, he's meaning, right? Because he's there. You can see he's asking you, should I put these in the bag? But he's saying, would you like me to bag these for you? And then you might be thinking later, hmm, he used the word bag, but I'm not, I wasn't familiar with that. Oh yeah, it's because he used it as a verb, not a noun. Okay, so very often that's a confusing thing for English learners. And, um, as we go through this video, as I make the icing, I'll try to think of more examples, okay, of these, these nouns and verbs 
because it's a very common thing in English to, 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 to make a noun into a verb or vice versa, right? And they mean that very often they mean the same thing. Like I'm, uh, I have a blanket right bit behind my phone here. <laughs> so I'm recording this on my cell phone right behind my phone. I have a blanket to, uh, to deaden the sound so that my voice doesn't echo through my living room. Right, my kitchen and my living room are kind of one ro big room, and so the sound kind of echoes. So I set up a kind of a towel, uh, not a towel, a blanket. Right, so the word blanket is a noun. Right, you probably sleep under a blanket every night. So that's a noun, right? It's a thing. It's something. Remember, a noun is like a person, a place, or a thing, or an idea. Right, even an idea like love, for example. Love is all you need. In that case, it's a noun. But if I say, I love you, then it's a verb, right? So, uh, so nouns are, are things usually that you can touch, like cookie, air. Can't really touch air, but it's a noun, right? So blanket is a noun, but blanket can also be a verb, right? I could say, wow, look at all that fresh snow outside. It snowed last night. The snow has blanketed the world. The snow has blanketed the countryside, the ground. Right? So to blanket something means to cover, and we usually use that word with snow. So if snow blankets, you know, a city, that means the snow just kind of covers everything. It's actually really beautiful. If you come to, to uh, Calgary here in the winter, you know, after a fresh snowfall, if you look out over a community, it's just fresh snow. It's clean. Everything's like white, like, especially if it's sunny, if it's a sunny day after a fresh snow. It just looks so white because the snow has blanketed everything, right? So, hey, did you know that blanket could be used as a verb as well? So, uh, let's start making the icing. I'll think about some more um, <clears throat> words, but uh, so let's just, uh, whoops, I knocked my golden knife off the table. Look at that, my nice golden knife. We're going to use the knife to spread the... Uh, Spread the icing. Okay, so first thing, just grab some icing sugar. Right now, remember in the last episode, we talked about the difference between icing sugar and granulated sugar. Granulated means the small grains, right? This stuff is granulated sugar. This stuff is powdered sugar or icing sugar, okay? So we're just gonna dump some in here, all right? Dump some into the bowl. And then, this is super simple, guys. You're gonna be making icing every day after you realize how simple this is. Now we're just gonna add a tiny bit of milk, okay? Not much, just add a little bit, okay? And now we're gonna get our beaters, and we are going to beat this. All right. So I don't think I added enough milk. Let's add a little bit more milk. Just added a little bit of Guys, this icing sugar is flying everywhere. I'm breathing it in. Let me know, is icing sugar good for your lungs? Maybe it's healthy for your lungs. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna put a little bit more milk in here. But like I said, not too much. You want it kind of nice and thick to spread onto the cookies, right? So, we're just gonna mix it with our beaters. Remember, these are called beaters. Mmm, that is good stuff. Okay, let's see, I think that's gonna be enough. All right, that's gonna be perfect, guys. That is perfect right there. I'm so excited about this. Yes. <laughs> All right, perfect. All right, that's the perfect consistency. Remember a few lessons ago, I taught you guys the word consistency. You can, you can describe a liquid that you're, you're trying to talk about the thickness of the liquid. So you want it kind of a, a bit runny, but still a little bit thick. Now this might almost be a little bit too runny, right? If it's like too liquidy, you can say it's runny, but it's, uh, it, I think it's gonna be perfect. Okay, so we're just gonna grab a cookie. Now this one says, stop talking, and we are going to ice the cookie. All right. So back to the verb and noun thing. Let me know in the comments. Can you think about 
Can you think of a few words that you can use as a verb or a noun? Hey, actually, my name. I just thought about my name can be used as a, a noun or a verb. Like my name is, uh, it's Mark with a capital M, right? It was a little black speck. Little tiny thing is called a speck. You know, if you don't know what it is, just a little black thing. Might be like a piece of dust or a little, just something, right? If you don't know what it is, it's a really small, you can call it a speck. A speck, like a speck of dust. Like sawdust, for example. If you are cutting wood, right? There's all those little pieces of wood. Those are called, that's called sawdust. It's like dust from the wood, right? Sawdust. So you can say there's a speck of sawdust. I got a speck of sawdust in my eye. Ugh, I was cutting this wood. It got a little speck of sawdust in my eye. Okay, so speck. Icing is dripping off the cookie. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk to you about my name, Mark. So names are, that's called a proper noun. Okay, there are two kinds of nouns. There are proper nouns that we use with a, like a capital letter. So my name is with a capital M, right? It's a proper noun. But then like a, a common noun, like a normal noun, like cookie, we don't capitalize the word cookie. It's just a normal thing, right? Or milk or air, sky, house. Those are just kind of common nouns. So, um, but my name can also be a verb. Did you know that? Actually, my name could be a common noun, a proper noun, and a verb. Okay, so a mark. Let's talk about the other version of a noun. Okay, so, so, so my name is a proper noun, but a mark is also a thing like there. I just made a mark in the cookie, right? It means like a little something. Like if you mark a paper, if your if you're, you know, teacher is marking the paper, well, in that case, it would be a verb to mark the paper, but the, your teacher is, is making like a check mark or like an X or something like that. They're putting writing on the paper. So that's called mark, to mark up an exam or a test or a quiz. So that's a verb, but this is actually a mark. So I, or if you get, uh, if you get bit by something, a spider or something like that, and then uh, maybe the next morning, maybe it's at night, you don't realize it in the morning, you look in the mirror, hmm, where did I get this mark from? It's like saw a red, a red mark on your skin somewhere, right? Hopefully not your face. Hope you don't get bitten by a spider tonight. That'd be bad. So mark, proper noun. Mark, kind of just a regular noun. And then the verb, the verb to mark something. So I just marked a mark in the cookie. To mark, it means the same thing, right? Or if the teacher is gonna, is gonna mark your, your paper, your quiz or something like that. So there's another example. So I, like I said, in this video, I'll probably think of a ton of examples, you know, I'm, I'm just even just looking at this table right here. Table, right? This is a noun. It's not a proper noun, nothing special, it's just a table. Not special like me, right? Let me know down in the comments if you guys think I'm special, or if you think this table is more special than me. So, table is a noun, but did you know that table can also be a verb? To table something, to table an idea. Let's say you're in a meeting, you're in a business meeting and everybody's giving some ideas and uh, the boss might say, you know what, let's just table this. Let's table this, that means to delay it. Let's table this idea. Okay, that means let's just, let's just set it aside for a while. Okay, let's table, let's table it. And then we'll come, they'll come back to it later. So that's what it means to table something. It kind of means to set it aside for now. Okay, so guys, I mean, you know, I could be, I could be here all day talking about these things. It's uh, light. I'm looking at a light right here, right? The word light is a noun. That's my light. But to light something is also can be a verb, right? To light the darkness, right? If you light a candle, you're, 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 you're lighting it. Right, so you know, guys, this is just so common. So that's why I think this is a is a good topic um, because a lot of people don't realize that nouns and verbs 
are the same word for so many words in English, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, like book. I'm just looking at a book on my coffee table. A book, but then to book something, to book a plane ticket or to book a train ticket. You know, I don't want to keep wasting your time, but I just want to, I wanted to hammer home the point, right? I just thought another example. I see some water there on my, on my counter. Water is a noun, right? I am drinking water. But if you water your plants, right, you're, you're, you're watering them. It's a verb. All right, guys, I got to stop here. I got to just switch my brain off and stop doing this. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be here till kingdom come. Till kingdom come means till the end. <laughs> till, you're going to be here till, till kingdom come, right? The kingdom, of, the kingdom of God. That's where that idiom came from, right? So when, when, uh, when we talk about kingdom come, till kingdom come, that means the end of time, <laughs> like the end of time. So if I say, I better stop or I'll have you guys here till kingdom come. That means you guys are going to be here till the end of you, the world or till you die. All right, so let's, uh, let's <laughs> put a little bit more on here. This one says, I hope you die. Hey guys, let me know. If you, if you were to bake cookies for your future wife, what message would you put? Let's drop my cookie. If you were to bake cookies for your future wife, what message would you put on the cookie? Or husband, whatever, if you're, if you're uh, unmarried and you are hoping to get married, or if even if just hypothetically, if you would get married, maybe you don't even want to get married, but if you don't want to get married, but you're hoping to, let's just think about that hypothetically, right? Hypothetically, what, which, what message would you put on your cookies? <laughs> right? Would you put it something like this? Stop talking. I hope you choke. Remember in the last video, I uh, taught you guys the word choke. Um, or please go die. Let me know down in the comments what message you would put on your cookies for your future husband or your future wife. I'd be interested. I'd be interested to hear that. All right, so we're just going to uh, ice a few more of these. And then, guys, we're going to put some sprinkles on the cookies. All right, we are going to sprinkle some sprinkles on the cookies. So let's just, uh, we've got three cookies here. Can you see them? Uh, I'll just set this icing aside for a little, for a bit. Okay. Now guys, look at this. I have some sprinkles here. These things are called sprinkles. Okay. So you can see there's some different kinds of sprinkles there. There's some little hearts. Well, let's start with the hearts. Okay. So, Let's sprinkle some sprinkles on the cookies, okay? So this is a noun, right? You can see it. It's something there. It's a, it's a noun. Not that all nouns you can see. Like, like I said, love. You can't really see love. It's like an idea, right? But a noun is like a person, a place, a thing, an animal, an idea, like hope, peace, you know? But um, these hearts are a noun, right? So, uh, so these are called sprinkles. So the sprinkles is a noun, but we're going to sprinkle, which is a verb. So this action is called sprinkling. So we're just going to sprinkle the sprinkles on the cookies. Okay. Look at that. I sprinkled some sprinkles. Look at that nice cookie guys. Nice pink and white hearts. What other kinds of sprinkles do we have here? We have these uh, little balls, multicolored balls. Let's add some of those on another cookie. All right. So I'm sprinkling the sprinkles. Oh, actually, the icing is starting to harden. Look at that. They're can almost, almost falling off because the icing is getting a bit hard. But there it is, right? So very often, like this, mo this motion is to sprinkle. Like for example, um, if I were to grab a bit of sugar, right, some granulated sugar and sprinkle a little bit of sugar on the cookie. Okay. So that motion is called sprinkling. 
right? Or um, if you have a, a house with a yard here in Canada, nice grass, a lawn, right? You might uh, have a sprinkler in your yard that, that waters the lawn, right? That thing is called a sprinkler, right? So it sprinkles, it like sprays. And I don't know why it's called a sprinkler, not a sprayer. A sprayer or like in a house like um, in a, in buildings here in North America like if you if you go to a school or some kind of a building a public building and you you look up you'll see you'll see sprinklers in the roof that is in the event of a fire right the sprinklers will, will turn on and spray water to, to kind of try to prevent the fire from spreading all right, so <clears throat> so those things are called sprinklers. They sprinkle the water, right? So let's add one more kind of sprinkle. Um, sprinkles. Can you just have one sprinkle? I don't know. It's called a sprinkle. Just one. These are called sprinkles because they're always more than one, right? Let's add some of these guys here. Those weird long ones but let's just add a little bit more icing just to kind of keep it a keep it kind of wet <clears throat> oh actually i put sugar on that one let's grab another one okay put some nice fresh icing on there and then we're gonna sprinkle a few more sprinkles on there Ooh, awesome look at that guys isn't that amazing I lost a sprinkle. <laughs> I lost one of my sprinkles, guys. So guys, nouns and verbs, right? You can just see it. I mean, sprinkle to sprinkle. I'm looking at right here from the last uh, video, I'm looking at some salt. This is a noun, right? Salt is a noun, but if you salt something, that verb, that action is called salting, to salt. What do you think? Should I put some salt? Should I salt these cookies? Nah, I better not. That wouldn't taste very good, right? So guys, I mean, like I said, so many words that are like this with nouns and verbs. And it can be confusing when you hear a word that's not used how you think it should be used. When it changes its form, then it gets a bit confusing, right? You think, hmm, I, I, I know that word, but not as a verb. That's a bit weird, right? So if you're ever in that situation where you, you hear something that you don't quite understand, I mean, maybe you, you understand it, but you're thinking, huh, it's weird. It might be this issue. Because like I said, it's so common in English to have, to have nouns that can be verbs, right? I mean, I'm looking at a phone. I'm looking at my phone right now. I'm making this video on my phone, right? Phone is a noun, but to phone is also a verb. I'm going to phone my friend, right? I'm going to phone on my phone, right? So, I mean, yeah, like, guys, it's just anything. So many words, like a house. A house is a noun, but to house something, right? House, then the, actually there the pronunciation changes a little bit. So sometimes the pronunciation might change a bit. So to a house, I live in a house, right? In Canada, we say house. We say the O-U sound like that. In the U.S., they'd probably say house. I live in a, in a house. Ow. We say ow. House. <laughs> out and about. I'm going out and about. In my, and people uh, make fun of Canadians and think they say oot and aboot. I'm going Oot in a boot. I mean, it's going outside, just going out for something, going oot. But they say oot. Well, actually, we don't say oot. Maybe some, maybe in like Ontario, people say that a little bit more that way. But here in, uh, in mo most parts of Canada, we just say, we say out, which is a, maybe hard for some people to say that sound. Out. Out and about. So this is a house, but to house, then the, it changes to a, a z sound, to house. To house something means to to uh, to like give it a house, right? So um, you could say I'm housing. Um, I don't know. I'm housing my relatives for Christmas. Could you say that? I'm I'm I'm. Uh, and then it would be more natural to say I'm hosting my relatives for Christmas. 
I'm housing something. I can't think of a good example, guys. Um, but that's the idea is to, 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 like you say, I'm building a dog house to house my dog. To house it means to give it a place to live, right? If you house something, you give it a, a place to live. So that's basically um, that meaning. But, you know, guys, like I said, so many of these words can do this. So that might be c confusing for a lot of people. So guys, um, let's let's just taste test one of these cookies. But to do that, let's grab some some milk. In some parts of Canada, they say milk. I think in Saskatchewan, <laughs> they pronounce milk, milk, like M-A-L-K, which is a bit weird. Canada's a weird country. So let's grab a let's grab ourselves a glass here and pour ourselves some milk. And uh, all right. And um, let's dunk, let's dunk the cookie into the milk. Very often people like to have milk with their cookies, right? So this is what it means to dunk. I'm dunking the cookie in the milk. You want the first bite? You guys can have the first bite. There you go. What do you think, is it good? That is so good, guys. Man, that's good. <laughs> wow. Wish I could give you some of these cookies. You know, I was just thinking the word milk is also a noun, but it can also be a verb. To milk something, right? Like if you're milking a cow, if you go milk a cow, that's a verb. But also there's an... There's a, uh, another meaning of that verb, to milk something, okay, to milk it for all it's worth. Have you heard that? I'm going to milk it for all it's worth. To milk it for all it's worth. That's kind of an idiom in English. That means to make the most advantage, to, to take the most advantage of a situation. So... Let me think of some examples of that. So, because that's that's a good idiom to use, and it's uh, it's kind of an advanced phrase to milk something for all it's worth. Like if you are, uh, boy, I should have thought about that before making this video. Just just to give you guys the best example, maybe I can put some examples at the end of this video to to milk something for all it's worth. It means to use, to get as much use out of something as you can, to milk it. It's almost like almost to take advantage of, of something. Like uh, maybe you could say, now that, uh, now that I'm a student and I get free dental care because of my, because of my, uh, my student status. Very often here in, in Canada, like universities or colleges will have like a, a health care plan for the students, like a dental care or something like that. So if you're a student, you automatically get kind of dental benefits or something like that. Because here in Canada, dental care is not free, right? Your medical, your basic medical care is free. Like if you break your leg, you go to the doctor, the doctor will, you know, put your leg in a cast. And that's free. That's completely free. But if something happens to your teeth, that's not free. Or your eyes, that's not free. So eye care, dental care, you know, that's, that's not free right now in Canada this year anyway. In the future, everything could change. But um, so if you're a student, you, you know, you might say, um, now that I'm a student and I get free dental care, I just want to milk this for all it's worth. I want to milk it for all it's worth. That means you just want to get as much money out of the, the system. You know, you want to get all the benefits that you can. I'll try to think of some better examples and uh, and post them up here at the end of this video because that's a good idiom, to milk something for all it's worth. But anyway, guys, there you, there you have it. All these words, I mean, milk. Who would have thought you can use that as a verb in that way, to milk something for all it's worth? So I better, uh, better end this video before I talk your ear off. Don't want you just sitting there till kingdom come listening to me, you know, rattling off these noun, verb, 
words. But um, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Better take a swig of milk. Mmm, do I have a milk mustache? If you have a milk mustache, that means you have milk right here. So guys, cheers. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for joining me. Wish I could give you guys some of these cookies. They're, uh, they're awesome. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Maybe I should call them sprinkle, sprinkle cookies because I sprinkled sprinkles on the cookies. Anyway, guys, I love you so much as always. Hope you're staying safe and happy. Hopefully it's not very cold where you are because here in Canada, it's really freezing. I'll try not to freeze to death here so I can make another video to teach you English. And so on that note, I'll see you guys over in the next episode of English Cooking. Take care.